and welcome to another Perspectives, perhaps one of the last of the year. And um, I was just thinking, um, well, one of two things, because uh, just the other day, a friend of mine uh, who lives uh, in another continent sent me a message and they said that uh, they're now able to see the programming around them. They always knew for a long time that something was wrong, um, but now they had awakened to a degree where they could see the programming in the films. They said they could go back and watch the film from before and see the programming, predictive programming in the films, in the media, in the news around them, even in the, the school curriculum of their daughters. And, and in the, the schools in general and institutions, they said they could see the programming now. And also, when they're able to see the programming, it, my friend said, it also makes them realize where other people are and other people and other friends who don't see the programming. And they may be under the programming, the cultural conditioning. And my friend said that they would like to you know, wake them up um, and to you know, speak with them and to show them. And uh, my response was, well, you know, that may not always be the right course of action um, because people wake up at different times, people become aware in different ways. And, you know, I've always had the the understanding that a person must come to their own uh, awakening or their own understanding. And, and also because I think each person has to live their own truth. And by that, you can show your truth to other people. Because then that maintains your frequency, let's say, maintains your vibratory signature. Because if you... If you're trying to go into the masses, go into the programming to, to shake people, then you're going down to where they are. You're going down to that denser frequency. Whereas I would consider, in my, totally in my perspective, that if you stay at your frequency, you can lend a hand to pull someone up, but you don't need to go down to where they are. Because when you're down to where they are, you're, let's say, you know, to take the allegory of Plato's cave, you know, there are people in the, in the cave looking at the shadows on the wall and they don't see behind them the origin of the, you know, where the, the light or the, the original um, elements are. Where they, and if you go into the cave, then you're in their environment and it's much harder then you, you start to um, relate with them upon their level, which means you know, trying to shake them or speak to them. But of course, you know, as, as the saying goes, you know, if you're, if you're shouting, then you've already lost the argument. Um, whereas if you're outside of the cave, when you see someone turning their head around away from the shadows to the light, you can offer their hand, your hand, to help them climb out the cave. But you can't offer your hand if you're in the cave with them, because then you've both got to get out. So I've always felt it more appropriate that you just live your truth you stay within your frequency and, and if other people notice that then that gives them something maybe to to motivate them to move towards or a role model or a representation i'm not talking about a role model in in you know some um egotistic sense but we all have to represent ourselves and by doing that we represent our state we represent where we're at and if that appeals to other people, they can see that and they can see where um, you're operating from. But you see, you can't see that distinction if you go down to them and start to, you know, um, speak with them on, on that, in that energy. So you need to actually show the distinction for there to be a distinction to be recognized by some people. So I said to my friend, no, um, I would say just live your truth, do your thing, and um, and you will then start to maintain your energy. And then if anything, that energy can, can be dispersed and transmitted to others 
rather than you going down to the, uh, the, the swamp, the mass energy. And also maybe think about um, some of the Abe teachings, which uh, you may know that I've been involved with. And Abe has always said, you need to allow. Um, allow, in order to sync up to, to the frequencies, to the natural rhythm, you have to allow things rather than, rather than seeking to push for them. Even um, the other day I was reading, rereading an Abe message about choice. And Abe was saying, even choice, people, people are pushing and pushing for choice, thinking that something is really important to have choice. Um, but by doing that, you're blind to the fact that you don't have freedom. And I thought that was an interesting point because, you know, you walk into some, let's say, Walmart-like store and you have hundreds and hundreds of, of these shelves stacked high of all these products. You may have a hundred different TVs, you know, and you, then you're bombarded by choice and then you're confused about which one should I have, which brand, which, you know, and, and then you... We think we have freedom because we're, we are shown this abundant choice. But in fact, that takes us away from ourselves. It brings us into the confusion. It brings us into, the, brings us into the, the struggle to choose this over that, to eliminate this, to eliminate, to choose that. And then we start to um, go into distinctions and categories and polarities rather than being in the flow. And to allow rather than to impose uh, seems to be the more natural rhythm of syncing up with the, the let's say the greater energy the consciousness flow and when thinking that that thought I was reminded of um, a kind of song poem spoken word song that I written um, a couple of years ago, I think it was 2019. Um, so in 2019 I did a, I made a, a spoken word album with a, an artist from Costa Rica called Hidra Cognitiva. And we, you may be aware of that, it's on my Bandcamp page. Um, I'll put the link to that below actually. Um, but I did the Bardo Times album and then afterwards uh, this guy from Costa Rica, uh, Mario, uh, who has his band name Hydrocognitiva. He said, I'm making an album of different songs. Would you like to write one song? I write the words, I'll put the music to them. Uh, just as a one-off. So I did, and I, I wrote a, a text which I called Life in L dot I dot F dot E dot. Uh, an acronym for life. And I went back to try and find that what that text that I couldn't find at all. I look, I searched on my computer. I couldn't find it, so I don't know where my original text has gone. So I went back onto onto uh, Spotify um, to find the song, and it's there. And and again, I will put a link to that song below. And the acronym of life actually represents um, living intimately, living intimately with the flowing essence. L-I-F-E, living intimately with the flowing essence. And I was surprised because I'd forgotten <laughs> what I'd written and forgotten what life stood for. Um, life stands for many things, of course, but um, that made me think, yes, that sounds about right. That sounds for me spot on, especially with what I'm feeling and thinking now, is that there's so much going on around us, and I've talked before about um, the danger of getting entangled into external energy, and um, and really, if we live true to our life, then it's living intimately with the flowing essence, um, in the flow, and the essence of of our who we being true to ourselves. Um, so, um, 
Then it also made me realize that, of course, we are, a, humanity is a young species. We're still growing up or learning to grow up. And what's happening in the world right now is, is part of our growing up, moving out of our infancy to, to be a little more grown up. And so we're shedding a lot of the old world. And it's just like a snake shed the skin. We have to shed the skin of the old world. And that's why we're seeing a lot of this dead skin in the world. And yet people are arguing and fighting over the dead skin. And the more we do that, the more we're blind to where we need to be in the flow. And when I had that thought, I realized that over, over 20 years ago, I'd read a book uh, which uh, impacted me at the time. And it was a book called New World, New Mind by Robert Ornstein and Paul Elric. Um, now, I'm not... I'm not a fan of Paul Elric, I should say, um, but I do like the work of Robert Ornstein, who um, started an organization in America called ISHIK, I-S-H-K, the Institute for the Study of Human Knowledge. And he um, was a psychologist who uh, was one of the first to talk about the uh, left and right hemisphere of the human brain and how that affects our perception and cognition. He was writing about this since the 1980s, before um, uh, Ian McGilchrist popularized it recently with his uh, work. And I remembered that they talked specifically about humanity being a young species. So I, I looked up the quote that I remembered being in the book. And this is the quote. He says, Suppose Earth's history were charted on a single year's calendar, with midnight January the 1st representing the origin of the Earth, and midnight December the 31st the present. Then each day of Earth's year would represent 12 million years of actual history. On that scale, the first form of life, a simple bacterium, would arise sometime in February. More complex life forms, however, come much later. The first fishes appear about November the 20th. The dinosaurs arrive around December the 10th and disappear on Christmas Day. The first of our ancestors recognizable as human would not show up until the afternoon of December the 31st. Homo sapiens, our species, would emerge at about 11.45 p.m. All that has happened in recorded history would occur in the final minute of the year. Um, now we probably heard some analogies similar to that floating around. Um, probably quite apt since we're coming to the end of the year now, and so it fits in time-wise. So what um, Ornstein, Robert Ornstein is saying here is that if we take one year from January the 1st to December the 31st as representing Earth's timetable, then um, the dinosaurs didn't arrive until December the 10th, just basically 20 days before the end of the year. Um, and they disappeared on Christmas Day. So within the last few days of the year, the dinosaurs disappeared, which for us was millions of years ago, according to uh, Orthodox history. And so the Homo sapiens did not emerge till 11.45 p.m. That's 15 minutes towards the end of the year. And all that had happened in our recorded history of humanity has occurred in the final minute. So really our so-called modern civilization of humanity in, in terms of the earth year is just less than one minute old. Um, so we are incredibly young, immature, lacking perception. Um, but that's okay because everything has to grow and we should allow that growth. You know when 
when the baby starts to grow up, you take off the diapers, as you say in the US. We call them nappies in the UK. But, you know, at some stage you have to take the diapers off, otherwise, you know, it's going to constrict the growth of the baby. It's going to be very uncomfortable. And hopefully the baby has learned to use the toilet by then. So you could say humanity now is just really taking off its diapers and all the shit's flying everywhere, you know, quite literally. And that's what we're seeing in the world right now. But, um, you know, you don't focus on the feces, feces being scattered everywhere. You focus on walking as a newborn, as an early child. And so the new world is about walking to where we need to go. Not, um, not getting entangled in the in the shits show. Um, and then again, people, there's a lot of talk now about trying to describe this, the new world, the future where we're going to, and a lot of people, I think, are saying, well, let's we have to we have to try to pin it down. It has to be A, B, and C. We need to we need to kind of, you know, get it structured so we know where we're going to. And again, I would say, well, that's really a product, I think, of the linear, human linear thinking, is that because we've had an ABC in the past, we want to have an ABC to take us in the future. But you see, we don't know what's coming about. Um, the Earth is going through amazing changes energetically. Uh, it's, it's changing its magnetic grid. It's changing its Earth energy lines. It's receiving different energies from the cosmos and the solar system is receiving different energies from its cosmic environment and things are changing that we are not aware of. So who are we to impose A, B and C on where the world is going? The same thing as above, so below. The same thing, who are we to impose on other people? This is the A, B and C of the reality, of the programming. Um, maybe life is actually about living intimately with the flowing essence. So rather than trying to impose a specific type of new world on where we're going, we want it to be like this. We're humans just learning to walk. We don't know what it's going to be of where we're going. And if we impose our belief system of where we're going, we're going to impose it from the state of the mind we are now. But we want to leave that behind. We want to go to somewhere which, again, is like reaching into Plato's cave, offering the hand and pulling us up. But we don't know where we're being pulled up to. We don't know where we're going to arrive to. So we should stop, I would say, my perspective is, we should stop trying to impose where we're going and allow the, allow the flow to take us there. Um, because if we try to impose... We're also resisting that which we don't understand or which we feel doesn't fit into our viewpoint. So by imposing, we're also resisting other things that we don't agree with. But we don't know where we're going. We don't know what we're not going to agree with. So let's just be in the flow to be open to receive where we're going so we can adapt to it, resync with it, recalibrate with the resonance of where we're going and allow the new world to grow us from within, living in the flow and essence. That is life. And in the next few years especially, it's going to be incredibly important that we figure out for ourselves what it means to be human. And maybe human life is about, and I'll say it once more, living in the flow and essence. Um, so there's just some thoughts that came together um, from my friends' comments. So as always, I appreciate you sticking around and checking in and listening to me. Um, it's important to listen and I appreciate that more than my speaking. So have a good one and uh, cheers.